tips. It's probably a matter of getting it wrong and then getting it less wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like the idea that there is one person in the world for you is probably one of the greatest myths that I think is out there. I think... Oh, well, you heard it here first, folks. Love is dead. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. Hi, you're listening to Sam and M Solve the World's Problems. Big problems, casual conversations. Oh, man, we have the most special guests in the world to us on the podcast today. Yeah, if you didn't guess from the title of this episode, we are talking to our mums. Yeah, it was really nice to have like a, like a meaningful conversation with them about their lives. It's something that I think not a lot of us do. I mean, yeah, I've yeah. never really delved into yeah it's not often that you get a chance to sit down with your parents and actually ask them about their life and yeah we always get advice from our parents but Mm. we get to ask targeted advice about stuff that matters to us in this episode which was really nice yeah we talked a little bit about uh, how you discover your life purpose if that is even a thing you can do yeah and how to know whether you are with the one or not the right person (laughs) the right party yeah or whether yeah um yeah, I'm really excited for everyone to hear this episode, so please welcome to the podcast, our mums. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. I, knew, I know it's a, it's a long way for both of you to travel to be here in our lives. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a long time since we've been able to see you both, and yeah, it's really nice to finally be in the same room. Yeah, it's nice to be able to have a chat with you guys, actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 finally, have, finally have time for, to, to actually chat. Yeah. yeah, so for our listeners, who are you guys? Well, well I'm mums. I, I'm, a, I'm a mother <laughs> of one of you. Yeah, we need to distinguish the voices. I'm Emily's mum and sort of like Sam's god mum. Yeah, kind of like. I think yeah. we share a little bit of shared parenting experience. So I'm Sam's mum. I'm Fiona. And this is Lisa, Emily's mum. Yeah. And yeah, we're fake family is how I always define it. Fake cousins. So Nona is my oh, – also – Call her Nona. Yeah, I don't even know where that came from, but I don't think I've ever called you Fiona ever in my life. I think Nona came from the the first niece or nephew that couldn't say Fiona, and it just became Nona. And so I've always been Nona or Auntie Nona to people that know me. Yeah, and to me, you're just Mum. Yeah, that too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So. Yeah, I I guess we don't really need to cover the how do we know you part because that's pretty obvious. Um, But I guess what do you both do? Mum, my mum, Lisa, (laughs) do you want to start? (laughs) Sure. Well, um, I've had a few different jobs, but presently I'm a business manager of one of our own businesses that we run, which is an online team building portal system. And Sam used to work for me yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for about a, a year. Yeah, there's even more to the. I was. I don't know how to describe the like relationship. Family that, crossover. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot more because we were both at both births. Yes, we were actually. Oh my goodness! I was at the birth of Emily, and Lisa was at the birth of Sam. So I didn't know that. Of course, we were, we were at. I was at Emily's birth too. Well, <laughs> and I was at Sam's yeah. birth. Yeah. Too. That, isn't that amazing? It is. Yeah, so much in common. Nona, <laughs> you were also. Best man at mum and dad's wedding. This is also true. Yeah. yeah can yes. we get into that a bit? How did that come to be? Because that surely even at the time, that was that weird? Not at all. Only well, finding something to wear. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trick. Thing. That yes. was a trick and took a little bit of work. But being best man wasn't weird at all because I was close friends with both Ross and Lisa at the time and um, it just seemed to work really mm. well. So it was probably weird for other people. But yeah. it wasn't weird for us. Yeah. Mm. I guess that's all that matters. Mm. I, f- I always find that's a really fun fact of trivia and people are like, oh, that's so that's so cool. I'm like, yeah, it Because is. if you're yeah. close friends with both of them, why didn't you end up being one of the bridesmaids? <laughs> because Lisa had a, a friend um, who was her bridesmaid yeah. um, and I was the person that Ross chose for the best man. And she had to organise a Bucks party. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, yeah, did you? I did. And I even came along. <laughs> <laughs> What about? That's <laughs> just all about breaking conventions, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even well. back then. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to ask questions about the Vax Party, but you know what? I don't want to know, so yeah, that's I fine. I prefer not to know. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> I want to get kind of more into the intro, like, of um, I want to get your perspective on, like, nature-nurture, like how much of 
us was organic and how much are we amazing by accident? Yeah, how much is <laughs> us and how much is your fault? Yeah. <laughs> I take all credit and no responsibility. <laughs> that's always my line. So that's where I get that from. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> You're more like me than you know, Sam. I feel like I should be filming my face because already I feel like yeah, I've got I a bunch you. of eye rolls. <laughs> to get my camera up. There's twice as many with me and my mum in the room. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Lisa? Well, uh, Emily is, uh, I think, her father's personality. Yeah. Yeah. Shout <laughs> <laughs> out to you, Dad. What was that emotion in that tone? <laughs> I prefer not to go into it. <laughs> but she also has the Judd side musical ability. Um, but we're twins. But yeah. yeah. She, her, she's got my looks. So Unfortunately. Well, which is just really <laughs> <I'm not laughs> <here. laughs> Thanks, Em. <laughs> Brown hair. So, but also all of the face features. We've, we look very similar. We do. But on the nature nurture thing, I was always really strong on how important nurture is. Um, being, I'm a teacher. That's one of the things I do. Really? And, um, Sorry, I'm going to stop doing things like that. Yeah, you the do. Beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the subjects I taught was child studies and um, I was always very strong about the role that nurture plays in the development of human beings and the development of gender identity. Sam was my biggest lesson in how much of a role nature plays. I'm concerned. In, oh. <laughs> <laughs> in, in gender and, you know, that sort of trait. So I think there's a really strong combination between nature and nurture in the way that people develop. But I think if you if I ask Sam, what colour car is the best colour car, Sam? Red, immediately. <laughs> yeah, because it's the fastest. Yeah. Red's the fastest. Because yeah. ever yeah. when Sam was a little boy, I had a um, little baby from then, I had a red car and I would always say to Sam, red cars are the best cars, red cars, <laughs> fast cars. <laughs> I mean, it's prove me wrong. A, yeah, <laughs> true. It was but, always. But we never have any red car. We don't have a red car now. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. but also, Thanks. you've just said what you kind of have taught Sam. I remember the first person who ever taught me how to harmonize was you, Nona. And I remember yeah. Dad was like, "We, I don't know." There was some song, and he's like, "Emily, can you just sing a harmony?" And I was like twelve years old, and I was like, "I what? I what? How?" How do you do that? <laughs> and you were like, oh, just find a note that sounds good and sing it. And from then, I have harmonized to every song I've ever heard ever in my life. And isn't it the funnest thing it's to do? It's the best thing. Yeah. I honestly, I can't not sometimes. Yeah. Like it just falls out. It's hard to sing the melody. Yeah. 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 So that answer your nature versus nurture? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a good introduction to why we're who we are. Yeah. Well, shall we jump into the first problem? Today uh, we are solving Sam and M oh. is kind of the uh, way we're approaching this episode. Yeah. So yeah. shall we solve you first, Sam? Do you want to start? What's yeah. your Let's give it a go. Ooh, big problem? Okay, so my problem is I want to know, and it might be unanswerable, half of the problems we do on this podcast are unanswerable, I swear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's um, why we do it. And that's why we do it. We want to have these conversations. Um, so I want to know if you ever knew exactly what it was you wanted to do with your life in general, if you have like a singular purpose or if there, if there's ever a way to find out what it is you should be doing or if you know you're doing the right thing. Maybe I should structure it that way. There's two different questions there. The first one I would say categorically no. Knowing exactly what you want to do with your life um, is not always a clear thing. The second thing that you said is, do you know that what you're doing is right? Yes, you can know that. Once you're doing something, you get a sense of what is purposeful to you and what feels right with your own purpose in life. I feel as though what I'm doing now in my life is not something I would have planned or predicted to be where I was, but through the pathway that I have gone with my career, in teaching, I now am in a position where I feel like I'm doing what I absolutely love to do and where I can have an impact that is meaningful in the lives of other people, which to me is a really positive thing. So I feel like I'm doing the right thing that I should be doing right now. How long did that take to figure out? Oh, gosh, how like, long have I been in my career? <laughs> I was going to say, is it like can I expect to know by tomorrow for me personally or I do I have to wait another? I don't think that's a thing. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that you 
make the best of the opportunities that present themselves to you at any given time. And there's no right or wrong choice. There's no right or wrong decision about what you're going to do with your life. There is right or wrong things for you yourself personally if you think you're doing something that goes against your own code of ethics or your own value system, that's wrong. But there's a whole range of opportunities that you can follow that fit within your ethics. So if that feels right, then there's a range of, of choices that you can make. And you never know which one is going to take you down a pathway that will be the one that you find meaning in. How do you even start figuring out what you want though? Like I'm doing a degree that I enjoy but has just opened up so many doors that I have no idea which door I am interested in. And I just like how do you even decide which one to go through? I think you prepare yourself based on what you're really interested and passionate about. And then you make sure that you are open to the opportunities that come across your path. And there may be a number. There may It may seem like there's a long wait between them, but at some point an opportunity will present itself. And if you have prepared yourself, it's like that old saying that good luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. You prepare yourself, you immerse yourself in the stuff that you love to do and build those skills in yourself. And when opportunity presents itself, then you're ready for it. Mm. So rather than getting worried about whether you're doing the right thing or whether you're meeting your life's purpose, enjoy what you're doing in the day, prepare yourself and be developing your skills and your attributes. And then when opportunities come up, take those. So you don't have to love every waking minute of what you're doing all the time. No, not at all. And sometimes you're in it for a while because you need to make ends meet, you need security in income for a period of time and that's a good reason to be in it. If you recognise that's why you're doing it, that's all right. But um, if it feels wrong to you, if it feels like it's killing your soul, then it's not the right thing to be doing. Mm. Mum, you have changed jobs like a billion times. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And like... You, okay, so you used to be a midwife. Now you work at, through a team building brokerage service. Like, how did you make those career changes? Like, what was the decision making process for you? Um, well, I think when I was at school, um, I wanted to be physio to start with in year twelve, but I wasn't a very good student and <laughs> <laughs> couldn't be bothered putting in the work for the marks that I needed for physio. And also, I didn't like sputum. So that was a big. What is what is that? No, don't define that, please. <laughs> it's one of the things that will make you. Yeah, I'm already face. doing the face. <laughs> okay, if so, anybody else doesn't know what that is, we're probably better off. So, Why don't a physio need to deal with that? Well, physios in hospitals do because right, but people I, with chest infections, and that's where I bleh. did did my. Um, <laughs> but then you became a midwife. Yeah, yeah, but so, no, gross babies. Babies that's, aren't gross. They have stuff on them. That's uh, the other uh, end of the body. Yeah, and that, and that <laughs> end is fine. So, But just, no, I didn't like sputum. So then I decided to do nursing. So I thought because I, actually I was going to do nursing in a hospital and when I was in year 12 they changed the course and I was the very first college intake for nursing. So it was like nice three years of uni I enjoyed that and then I did a year of practical, well, the first year out you got to try a few different areas of nursing. So I tried operating suite, which I really liked. I tried um, kids wards in surgical and medical. That was great and I got to rotation in uh, rehab, which was mostly brain injuries and things like that, which I didn't like at all. So then I met a lot of friends when I was doing the pediatrics and most of them were going to do midwifery, which was still in the hospital. So I thought, oh, well, I'll see what that's like with my friends, enrolled in the course and loved it. So I found my purpose there in midwifery, um, really enjoyed that, really enjoyed postnatal care and enjoyed um, the honour of actually being at many of my friends' and family's births, um, at, you know, as a support person as well. So that was really good. And I then progressed through that 
and found that I really liked the niche of actually teaching within that. So I liked childbirth education. I became in charge of um, teenagers that were pregnant, running classes for them, and then progressed to being head of um, childbirth education at Westmead Hospital. And that was my ultimate goal in midwifery. And I achieved that and I achieved that, you know, sort of early on in my career and, and loved doing that. And and then when I had my own children, to try and stay in that and pay for childcare, I would earn $50 a week. So it just wasn't worth it. So I left that and, you know, then just worked as a midwife in evenings and weekends when Ross could look after the kids and still enjoyed that. But, um, you know, I'd got to the pinnacle of my career and thought, well, where to from there? So then I I really loved studying and decided to become a mid. Um, what did I do? A, a naturopath. So studied for that. I didn't actually finish that course, but we did open a natural therapies clinic, ran that for a few years, and then ultimately we got to the point where for our family and for income um, I needed to sort of stop and support Ross's businesses. So that's when we opened the team building brokerage and I ran that and also support Ross in team focus. Mm -hmm. So although this is not my choice of career um it was my choice in what was best for the family but it also gave me a lot of flexibility in i because we were running our own business if the kids had things at school i could take time off or if Mm. they were sick or because we you know often work from home um so it, it gave a lot of flexibility in family life so i think ultimately like i agree with everything fiona said there's not always one set thing that you find. There was lots of different paths. There were things that were right for me at that time. Um, and you really to find your interest and follow that it, because if you've got to go to work, you want to enjoy it. And that could just be that you enjoy because of the people there or you enjoy what you do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's no use working if you hate it. I think, but your career can change many, many times. So you don't have to decide tomorrow that for the rest of your life you're going to be such and such Hmm. when things can change so many times. And I guess industries change so much now as well, like certain jobs just don't exist. And Mm -hmm. so I guess it sounds like you kind of did as well what mum was kind of saying about, you know, creating opportunity for yourself and just Mm -hmm. accepting kind of, I mean, as your life changed, you know, you took different roles and, yeah, and, and I think Lise is kind of a good example of that too, that she didn't go, oh, well, I don't like what I'm doing but just did nothing about it. Um, she did courses and she, she went and I was really impressed when she went off and became a naturopath because I thought, wow, you're going off and studying and, you know, she didn't really know where that was going to go but she knew that she was very interested in that and that that was something she could be good at. So. She went. Yeah, and I worked as a massage therapist for many years. Yeah. doing remedial massage, which yeah. is the best part about you being my yeah. mom. <laughs> I get massages whenever I want. <laughs> so I mean, but things I've learned now, you know, I've never done any courses in marketing or you know website development, um, but I've you know know the back ends of websites and can load things up and know everything about posting and you know all sorts of things that. Um, I've just had to pick up at the times, you know. So it, it's it's interesting, um, but it's different. Where it's not, I still consider myself as a midwife, even though I haven't worked in that in mm. like for about fifteen years. Um, but that was probably my ultimate, you know, job. And I also love the fact that you kind of found it because that's what your friends were doing. I was going to make a comment at the time being like, you always told me not to just do things because that's what my friends were doing, but that's how you found your life goal. So, (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I always thought I would do it, but um, I only had one year out of nursing and they didn't normally take people just one year out. They wanted more experience after one year of nursing. But again, because I was the first college intake, they'd never had anybody go through college and only have one year out. So I was sort of a trial run. Hmm. Um, and, and it was very hard, the course, because, you know, if you go to uni or anything like that, you know, if you get 50%, it's a pass. 
okay? But in anything to do with medical, you can't be 50% right, you yeah. know? There are people live or die with 50% yeah. right or wrong. Mm. So the course might like just pass was 75. Mm. You know, everything was you had to be at least 80 to 90% right. Yeah. So it was a lot harder, harder than I'd ever found. Um, and you would, if you failed an exam, you had one chance of a bank up, you didn't pass that, you were out. That's so, still to this day. I have a friend studying yeah. nursing at the moment and he's been taking uh, – this is the second time he's tried to do this course and if he doesn't pass, he's that's, that's his whole degree is yeah, done. It's done. Jeez, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I'm actually is, relieved yeah. about that though. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Same. It, should, <laughs> it should be I that way. because I, my course is very easy comparatively, but yeah. yeah, wow. I'm glad that they have such strict rules about that. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the time, you know, at, at university, even though I was there doing nursing, you, you get to do electives and you find other things that you're interested in. So I really found that time there was really good to just try lots of things and then, like Fiona said, find what really interests you, what opportunities come up, um, and you never know where it's going to take you. It, has uni changed a lot over the years? Because I did not have that experience, but I also don't know like I, I dropped out of uni after one year because I just thought it was so. I think it kind of also depends on the nature of the course that you do. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, when I went yeah. through and I did teaching, I went through with a cohort of people doing teaching in a subject yeah. area. So you stayed with that group of people all the way through. So when, you know, when your sister did her chiropractic degree, she went through that whole degree with the same cohort of people. Mm-hmm. So they became close and they yep. bonded mm-hmm. and, and it was it was a connected That's way right. to be at uni. Yeah. But I think your experience of uni going in as one of a thousand people in an auditorium mm. where you then went off to a different subject and, you know, it wasn't, you didn't have that experience of connectedness and that that can be a big issue with transition from high school to uni. Yeah. I mean, I've done both. I did the degree with a thousand people that I didn't stay and I didn't meet anyone and I stopped that after a year because I hated it. And now I'm doing a similar course, like I'm just doing arts and media and communication so I don't have a group of people that I'm moving up with, but it's a much smaller uni. So I have same people in my classes or like, you know, there's 50 people and I'll have a couple in each class and I get to know them all a lot more. And Mm. um, Mm. so it's been better that I've been able to make more friends. But also it's been that experience of, it's an arts degree, so I'm doing all these different courses that I never would have imagined. And I didn't even know I, I started just doing arts, majoring in theatre, and now I've decided I want to major in film and screen production as well and do a whole double degree just because I've enjoyed those classes so much and I've, like, found a little – found more doors through that. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. When you do one thing, it opens up doors to other things. Yeah. yeah. So I think the main thing is picking the right course for you picking the right university for you or I think, way yeah. of learning for Can't you. Can't stress enough how important the right uni is for you. Yeah. Like yeah. In Australia, we like often live with our parents through university. Yeah. And so the social element is already like cut in half there. You don't you mm. don't live in a dorm with someone or, you know, so it's. Yeah. It can be a lot harder to. Be isolating, I think. Yeah. And, then, and it costs money and I didn't want to keep spending yeah. money on a degree I no. wasn't sure about. Like the no. fact that I wasn't yeah. 100% in it, I was like, this feels like I don't want to keep racking up debt. And it's that experience of like. If I am not, I feel like I should be enjoying this and I'm not and therefore I feel like something's yeah. wrong and I need to fix that kind of thing. You know, you see the American colleges and how fun it is and people have lifelong friends and they meet all these people and it's like that's not what it's like for us here or that mm. hasn't been my experience. Yeah, not at all. So it no. can be kind of isolating in that way. But I think if you find the right course, you know, like Lachlan, Emily's brother, started uni this year. He had three days at uni and then went into lockdown. So his whole first year uni experience was online. So he's, yeah. he hasn't met anybody. He's met a couple of people when they've had to do group work but only via Zoom. Mm. So, But he's still enjoyed the course mm. and he's still, you know, that's the course that he wants and next yeah. year he's picking up the marketing subjects which is what he wants. So even if he doesn't make any friends, he's still got his school friends and he's still got his social life yeah. outside of that Um so I think it, that will still help him to get through if mm. you find the right course. And maybe that course wasn't what you wanted, Sam. Otherwise, mm. you may have stuck with it. But true. just because you didn't meet people doesn't mean it's, you know. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah. I, know, yeah, I think thing. it was definitely not necessarily what I thought it was going to be at the time. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to put too many other reasons into it. I, it was definitely, um, I think I and made the right call dropping out at the time. Yeah. Going I'm, to uni or needed should've... a break or. Yeah, you were Great planning on doing a gap year between high school and uni 
And I was actually quite surprised when both you and your other sister went straight into uni from school. But, um, yeah. you know, that's that's an experience and that's you chalk that up to life experience too. Mm. Yeah. I think I didn't have any money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a cap year, I was like, yeah, anyway. Yeah, well, um, did you we solve the solved? problem? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I think there's been some good conversation around it. I feel like, you know, this is something that, like, I constantly think about and keep coming back to full circle in my head of, never mind, it doesn't matter. Um, And then because it doesn't matter, it starts mattering again for some reason and then. Well, I think the whole idea of finding a life purpose is probably a little bit ethereal. But having said that, life has purpose. So, in you finding something that you want to do that is not necessarily your life purpose but something you enjoy and you can immerse yourself in and build your skills and build your capacity, that's probably the best advice to give. Take whatever opportunities come to you, you know. If if it's just, you know, that you find out more about podcasts and things like that now and that's enough to keep you, you, you need to keep your brain stimulated and that's why I decided to study naturopathy. I just mm. got to a point, I, I've done my master's through to nursing. Mm. I need to keep active my, and which surprised the hell out of my mother because there was no way I would do any work when I was at school. But yeah. now I've got a master's degree in nursing and then I've got, you know, further study and further study and I just enjoyed studying and learning new things. Mm. So and I, I would never have predicted that I would go down the pathway that I did with my career because I was going to go into teaching for, you know, four or five years and then my real interest, I thought, at the time was in nutrition and dietetics because I'm a food tech teacher and I thought, well, that was where my area of interest really was. And then as I got into teaching, all these other opportunities came up and I got to be a year advisor and I got to be, um, you know, a leader of a number of different programs in a school and and then I got to be relieving in leadership roles and then that developed my leadership capacity and I then went for promotions and that's led me down a pathway that has kept me in the teaching game, which I wouldn't have predicted. So... Um, that's just those opportunities you pick up and it's not always through formal qualification but it's through experience and through um, opportunities that you, that you choose to take up along the way. So have we solved Sam? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Thank solved. Thank goodness. Look at that. Solved. Sam solved. Ideal. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry to interrupt this episode. This is Adam from episode 19, which just happens to be the date of my wife's birthday. So hopefully you enjoyed hearing about uh, my life with her living in Korea and traveling around the world. And if you did, hopefully you were able to do the four S's to share it, subscribe, support the guys on Patreon, or perhaps speak to a friend about it. They'd really appreciate it. What's your problem? Now let's solve Emily. What's your problem? (laughs) What's your problem? (laughs) Um, yeah, well, mine's not really a problem. It's just kind of I would love your advice on it. I feel like you both would have a lot of interesting perspective on it. I'm wondering, how do you know when you've met the one or met the right person? The and right I ask person you for what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the right, I don't know that you should... <laughs> no, I feel like you both have great experience. Okay, so this comes out of... So I've just turned 22 and mum, you were married basically by the time you were 22. That did not end well. Um, and I. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that yeah. one. Yeah. And so I'm just like, you both have had experience of getting it wrong and getting it right. And I am interested in what that's like and how do you know when you've met the right person? It's probably a matter of getting it wrong and then getting it less wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There. <laughs> There's uh, like the idea that there is one person in the world for you is probably one of the greatest myths that I think is out there. I think. Oh, well, you heard it here first, folks. Love is dead. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. Um, I think there are people that you can form a connection with and that you can develop. I'm trying to find the right words here that <laughs> that sound sound right for what I'm trying to say. That aren't incriminating? A little bit. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no. Lisa, what are your thoughts? Um, I think you have to not only know that they're the one but also be happy how they treat you. 
I think that's the biggest thing from coming from a relationship that was abusive and into a relationship that wasn't basically. So you have to be happy with how somebody treats you. I think that tells a lot about that person, tells them how it shows how they feel about you, their respect for you, um, you know, their love for you. And if they can't treat you with love and respect, (coughs) love and respect, they're not the person. Um, so, and it's, it's how you feel towards them as well. So, you know, if you take them for granted or, um, you know, don't enjoy t- being with them, they're not the person. But if you look forward to being with them, if you've got interests together, you know, I, I think that's, uh, you have to build it. I think it starts with a foundation. Um, and friendship is a good, solid foundation. And then it, it goes from there. So I think there's a lot of, so there's hope for people in the friend zone. There is. That's what is. you're saying. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I'm a living example of getting out of the friend zone, just saying, but anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, I met, I've known Ross since I was 12, I think. He was actually one of my brother's close friends. So you've known him at least and- 10 years. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, and, and we Suck were up. very good friends <laughs> growing up. He was somebody that I could always turn to and confide in, um, gave good, you know, I think a lot of people used to talk to him as a friend and um, and it just when I was separated, it just, you know, the friendship just became more into, I don't know. Into Emily. Into a relationship. <laughs> Finally into eventually. Emily. Eventually into Emily. And yeah. yeah. Say eventually, but it was like a year after you got married. It's not that eventually. Oh, yeah, but I was getting old. <laughs> True. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I I don't. Well, I sort of had the same experience as you. I started going out with my ex husband when I was thirteen till fifteen, and then broke up for five years, and we got back together when I was twenty, and then married at twenty two. So, and then divorced at twenty eight. But that there was always that underlying controlling and abuse and things like that. So. It wasn't a good, healthy relationship. I think that's what you've got to decide. Okay, you might think that person is the one, but are they good for you? How did you, I mean, you always hear people say like, you know, love is blind and so like people in abusive relationships often can't see it. Yeah. How did you know that you were in one and how did you then get out of it? Um, how did I know that I was in one? Because I was crying a lot. Um. Was there a moment, though, that you just kind of went? I wasn't the one to choose to get out of it. Right. What happened? He told me that he he needed space. He needed that old time chestnut. to be himself. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, what more time do you need when you do everything that you want, whenever you want, what more do you need? And he said, I don't know. I mean, I could see it. I didn't like the way I was being treated but I was married and I was in the relationship you know it was, it was in it I was supposed to be in it for the long term you know we were married so when he said no I don't want to don't want to be married in war or he left um I went to a counselor probably within a couple of days at work and just things that the counselor said to me I went hey <laughs> you know what I don't want this guy back that's it I'm done so, yeah, that's how I moved on. How'd your one go, Mum? <laughs> <laughs> you really want to go there? <laughs> I, I remember Lisa breaking up with her ex-husband not long after the breakup had occurred. Oh, we did that at the same time too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Because <laughs> I can remember, um, you know, counselling that side saying, no, that's not the best way to go, don't do that. <laughs> But um, but he did that anyway. So well, I've got to say, when I was first married, I really thought that I was with the right person. I don't think you ever go into a marriage unless you think you are. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's not until you spend some time and you get to know somebody that you realise that things are not exactly as great as you hope they might have been. But how long is some time though, right? Because. Like it can be so different depending yeah, on. Yeah, it can. Mm. And that's every relationship is its own 
mystery and you have to travel your own relationship according to what's right for you. If other people see it differently from the outside, that's that's a different story and you can ask them if you want to know. I found so many times people don't want to know. A lot of the time they don't. Is that in itself a red flag? Um, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it depends, yeah, it depends on depends, the it? friend who might be telling you. Yeah. Mm. The, you know, a friend might be always opinionated about who you go out with and then mm. you're But if not you have like a really close them. friend and like, I don't know, you see stuff and you say like you've, I don't know, just feels. My, my suggestion would always be open to listen. Mm. You don't have to take on the advice that other people give you, but it's always good to hear it and then you can make sense of it. You can be your own judge about whether you take that on or whether you don't. What if you're the other person though? What if you want to say something about a friend who's in a relationship and they're not willing to listen? Like that, I guess you just have you to. You can't make them you listen. You can't force you can't. it. No. And you it, can just be there to support them yeah. and be there because it'll probably break down. Um, and and I, I want to disclaim as well. This is not a situation I'm currently in. I just. No, no, yes, no. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Will, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> All my friends are fine too. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. But yeah. yeah, just to be there and support, you know, your friend and listen to them if there is problems. And sometimes, yes, they don't want to hear your advice, but, but sometimes, you know, I don't think, I don't think it was until after I'd got out of my relationship that people actually said, yeah, he wasn't very nice, was he? Mm. Mm. I yeah. found that too. Once right. I got out of the relationship, people were willing to come and tell me what they really thought. But when you're in it, they, they don't do that. Offend you. Do you wish yeah. that they had? I wonder how much I would have listened at the time. But there were some people that I really wish I that did do that. Yes, mm. yeah. I I wished more that people would say something to him. Mm. As in mm. that behavior is not good or you shouldn't talk to your wife like that or, you know, mm. that sort of thing. Uh, so I, I wish people would stand, would have stood up to him and said that, you know, when situations were happening. So, mm. yeah. But happy endings, right? Happy endings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're here somehow. The second time's yeah. a charm. And, yes, it's been what I can always forget. Second or third or fourth. Years. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 23 years for the second one. So, mm-hmm. And I'm coming up to 20 years next year. You are. Mm. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So for people that that doesn't make sense to, I came yeah. out of the first one and M yes. came out of the second one. Yeah, this is true. Well, it's confusing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's all going to be so confusing. It yeah. sounds yeah. really weird. <laughs> the first mother and the second mother, no, the first relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I had no children with the first one and two with the second. Mm. Still there at the second. He's been interstate for the last four months working with COVID. So this has been the longest we have been away of being apart from each other in 23 years. Wow. Wow. Have you learned anything Mm. from that time apart? Um, He does listen to this, so be careful. He does does (laughs) listen to the podcast. What have I? um, Not not anything that I didn't really know, I don't think, about him. Um, I think... We don't have much to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, our days are pretty boring. So when we ring each other each night or whatever, and what you've been doing? Well, not much, just the normal work and cooking and doing it, you know, that I life can, is boring. <laughs> I even, even bumming into people at the pub that I haven't seen in five years, mm. I feel like that now with COVID. No one can do no, anything. There's, there's nothing to say. There's to be had. No. <laughs> and he's been living in a really small little town in, in um, South Australia. So, mm. you know, he hardly does anything. There's He's done a few bushwalks and things like that, but there's not a lot of nightlife or not a lot of any sort of, yeah. Things to do. Um, it was nice before Adelaide got shut down. I managed to be able to go away and meet him over there for four days. So that was nice. So about halfway of his trip. So, but he comes home on Friday and we're looking forward to it, aren't we? Mm-hmm. He'll be home yes. by the time this episode goes live. Yes. And we've planned a nice family holiday to just spend some time together. I think he's, I think it's much harder for him being away. Because mm. I'm still busy here. I've got the kids, the dogs, you know, the mothers are still doing everything. Whereas he's just on his own. There's just work in him. So yeah. um yeah, he misses family life and hearing what's going on and so it, it is harder for that person being away. Have we solved you? Yeah, I feel pretty solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my favorite. 
I think, yeah, y- you just get less worse. Oh, well. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there is no one person. <laughs> Having said that, there's people that you you feel that you um, connect well with and that you share some core values and common life you know, perspectives with. I think that's important. You have to mm. find someone that you can comfortably um, have a conversation with every day about the boring stuff. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. also share that really basic, well, this is what life is important in life for me. And mm. like with Rob, the family was a really big common denominator for us. Mm. And being able to have you know, family social events and, and he was able to come into the family of my ex-husband, which was kind of weird for a lot of people, mm. but he's now very close to them. So, you know, that says a lot about him to be able to embrace that. And mm. I needed someone who could come in and embrace my very complex and crazy and very social life. Yeah. Yeah, we now have an enormous family and it's impossible to explain to people how the family tree works. It is, that's to true. To bring diagrams yeah. to social events. <laughs> it, I remember bringing Will to like the first Easter brunch and being like, yeah, this person is related to this person. No, this person is not related but they're friends and then this person is related yeah. to this. And yeah. These people are dating yeah. and that, yeah, and it's always, yeah. But, you know, as we've already established early in the podcast, um, normal convention isn't really the way we do things, so, you know. Make, make your own traditions, make your own life and make your own normal. Okay, we have two listener questions for you. Okay. The first is how do I get red wine out of clothing? Well, I'll leave that with you. Oh, I well. don't drink red wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are – I asked for uh, mum questions and I gave the example of uh, how do you clean a toilet, which is something apparently Sam and I both learned in the last month. Yeah. Well, I learned it and then they made fun of you and told me that you just learned it. I don't know whether that's true or not. They could have been lying. Well, no, that maybe he needed to learn it. I had <laughs> never formally <laughs> learned it. <laughs> um, red wine out of clothes. My method is to use a combination of Sard's Wonder Soap and scrub the stain with that. Is there a brandless one? Uh, I don't know. I I don't Just, know. But I should probably not promote a particular brand, should I? No, and that's then fine. And then soak it in a nappy wash solution. Um, so that has always got red wine stains out for me. Amazing. How long do you have to soak it for? What temperature water? It's warm water. Warm water? Yeah. Um, for like days or minutes? No, a few hours usually will do it. I was close. And you then can, do you, you wash can, it normally after? Yeah, then wash it normally. That's a, that. that's a pretty good all-round stain removal system. What if it doesn't work? Do you have to throw the clothes out? Probably. Okay, yeah. there you go. We have another very, very similar question. Um, best things to get pink drinks out of white clothes, which we've kind of just sold. I think you'd do that too. How do you get chocolate out of white clothes? Why is there so many laundry questions? I'd probably do the same thing. Yeah. That's, my, <laughs> that's my go-to for all stains. Okay. Scrub it yeah. with sards and then let it soak in nappy sand, yeah. nappy wash, whatever. The- yeah, some kind of nappy soak. Right. I just buy the, the cheap one from Aldi or Woolies or somewhere, the $3 ones, just yeah. as good as the the branded 8 or $9 version. With that. Mm-hmm. And that's all and the – usually get on to it early, not yeah. leave it for a week mm-hmm. in your clothes basket. Yeah, well, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> or on the floor of your bedroom or yeah, something and then yeah. say, Mom, I want to wear this tomorrow. Some people also say <laughs> so, if, if you're at a like a function or something, soda water. Yeah, I've heard wash, soda wash water. Wash it out with soda water. Why? Yeah. What's the difference between soda water the and regular water? The carbonation helps get stuff out, mm. huh. I think. Look at me knowing things. Or the alkaline <laughs> or whatever it is. And what TV show did you get that from him? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that's TV like, show. <laughs> you, could have, you could have claimed that there, like how yeah, well you raised her. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mum. This is your moment. Yeah. Look at me knowing things. No, so. because it's the devil. Soda water sucks. <laughs> Why? It's Sam so good. Love soda water. Why put bubbles in water? Like, what is the point? Spicy. It's just bad. Spicy. Spicy, spicy water. I don't I, want my water spicy. I do. It's the best. Do you ever drink, just drink water and go, I wish this hurt? <laughs> <laughs> That's. <laughs> no. No, that, I haven't. That, that used to be a thing for Sam when he was little. He'd do something and it would, oh, that really hurt. Let's do it again. Yeah. It was always kind of that. Yeah, you are. I don't know what that was about, but yeah. that was a thing. Yeah, that must be a nature thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that I still do that. <laughs> okay, do you guys have problems for us? 
I don't know if you thought of one or if you've got them individually or together or whatever. Why do people post things on Instagram and Facebook that people re- other people don't really want to know about? <laughs> okay, can you give an example? I you don't want to throw anyone under the bus, right? No, no, I, I, no, I don't know. I suppose the food someone had for dinner yeah, last night. Yeah, what they've had for dinner or else. a political view. The politics one mm. I don't get. I would say that because they post it for them and who cares mm. what other people think is where I would go with that. Like, I don't yeah. know. I don't kind think like Imagine if you're going out it. somewhere nice and you've got a beautiful dinner and you want to take a picture, but, you know, every night of your dinners or, you know, I, I don't know. It wasn't around when our kids were young, so we didn't uh, have the opportunity to post as much, but, you know, a post every day of children. But, yes, but on the flip side, it is quite nice in Facebook when you get the memories back. Or Also, like when I went on my trip, you were always like, can you post more pictures? I want to see what you're doing and stuff yes. like that. But so- that was a... Particular time. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, every day. It wasn't. Yeah. And it was your trip that, and we did the same thing when we were in New York. I posted pictures so people back here could see it, but I don't post a picture every day of what I'm doing. Yeah. I struggle with this because I, I don't really post anymore because I guess I have the same kind of thought process. I'm like, if I don't even want to really like see this again, like, why would other people want to see it? I don't know. Mm. Is it, I, what you said before is like you just post it for you. Like I feel yeah. like that's kind of like wearing an outfit or you like wanting to look good. Like that's more about you than it's it is about other people. It's also then like I wear a cute outfit and I want more people than who I was with to see it. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I I had this outfit the other day that was real cute and I wore it and I was like went out to dinner with some friends. It was like maybe 10 of us there. And then I put it up on Instagram and I got it was like my most liked picture ever and I was like, yes, I went out of the house and wore a cute outfit and now people know about it and it's great. <laughs> And I post pictures of my children and my family and things like that because I'm so proud of them. But the, like, that's and special want, occasions. It's not an yeah, everyday yeah, event. That's true. Yeah. yeah, and the same with me. And I like to see what people are doing special occasions and like the wedding, mm. you know, all those type of things. And I've got, you know, family overseas and I like to see them, uh, you know, what they're doing. And it's, the, it's, a, it's a good way to keep in touch. But it's just those mundane posts of uh, every day this is what you're eating or I've got a coffee and I've got this and yeah. you yeah. wonder why some people post, that's all. Yeah, I, I agree. I kind of figure it's their thing and I just scroll past. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's it's kind of the new like, like I don't know, you take a picture of the bird sitting on your backyard and some people like you, I don't know, before social media, what would you do with that? Would you just keep it or would you like put it in a scrapbook or would you like, I don't know. It's kind of the new, like, I took this picture. What do I now do with this picture? It either sits there and never gets looked at ever again or I can put it somewhere kind of thing. I don't know. Okay, Nona, have you got a problem for us to solve? I do, actually. Yeah. Um, I took up your recommendation to become a Patreon subscriber. Yes, and which everybody should do. Yes, they should $1 do. $1 per episode to get bonus content, just a little plug. And And I think that I, you know, subscribed with more than required and you know I was happy to do that and but now I have a problem I don't know how to access it <laughs> <laughs> she's paying us for bonus content she's just not getting it I was watching that watching them being like I feel like we should be getting at least the one view on this <laughs> do you listen early when it comes out so, sometimes oh, because I can the early the earliness has uh, been oh, canned okay. I couldn't oh, do it but oh. the bonus content is bonus present content. and very much alive mm. yeah is that all the outtakes I don't know because I haven't listened <laughs> It's in the bonus content. The bonus content. We're creating bonus content right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of the conversations that doesn't make it into the regular hour cut and isn't uh, quite – it's usually great content but a little bit off track and so we cut it for the regular episodes but the people who want more of us, you can have bonus content, which is those sort of sidetracks. For example, in episode 19 with Adam Wade, there was a whole other problem that we solved with him that didn't make it into the regular episode oh. that is in the bonus content. That's probably what's missing from my life. Yeah, well, that that you, have, solve. you have the access to it, so now you just got to listen to it. Right. Yeah. But you haven't okay. told it how to yet. So you can you download the Patreon it. app. Or I think if you way. just go to patreon.com slash 
Sam and Em have problems. I'm just going to live the problem figure that is, out. I try and do it when I'm driving in the car and then I don't remember my password for Patreon and then I can't do that while I'm driving. Mm. Then when I get home, I forget to do it. So I've never quite well, resolved. Well, now is your moment if you've got your phone on you. I don't because I didn't bring it in here because I didn't want it to go off. That's very valid and I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you can find us on the app um, if you're listening to this take time right this second to download the Patreon app and be a supporter of us. To get, We have the 99 Problems tier is access to the bonus content and it will literally cost you $1 per episode um, to get that bonus content, which I think is $4 a month. And remember your password. Remember your password. Yeah, make it something yeah. that helps. Something easy. Yeah. yeah. So when you're listening back to this episode to proof it, Nona, when you hear this, get your phone out and do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Solved. Yay. Solved. Shall we move on to recommendations? Yeah, for sure. I have one ready to go. Do you guys have recommendations ready to go? My recommendation is we started a couple of years ago is making a family tradition of something. So we didn't really have any, I don't think I had any growing up, um, and we decided a few years ago that our tradition was going to start on Christmas Eve and we were going to make gingerbread men and gingerbread houses and then drink eggnog and then we drive around and look at the Christmas nights. And we've done that the last, I don't know, what, five, six years, I yeah. think. Well, it's also because we don't have a lot of family right. in Sydney. We don't have, yeah. So Christmas tends to be kind of a non-event. Like we have lunch and then normally we just like nap in the afternoon and there's <laughs> nothing more that happens there. So we were trying to like think of things we could do to make it a bit more of a thing. And so, yeah, Christmas yeah. Eve is kind of our thing. Well, it was always just the four of us and then my parents. So we had no cousins or aunts or uncles or anything. Um, and Ross's parents were up in Brisbane. So, yeah, it was just pretty boring with six people with no extended family. So we occasionally we had you guys drop in on yeah, your way to, to from one to another yeah, yeah for a you, little while, which was lovely. Yeah. Um, we used to come each year until the kids got a bit older and we got split so many ways yeah. that it got a bit harder. So, um, so yeah, we've made a tradition for Christmas Eve of what we like to do and, and uh, we drink the alcoholic eggnog and Dad, Mom. who doesn't drink, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, our, he's our designated driver and, you know, Christmas lights are pretty good when you're a little bit tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like that. Start a tradition. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, another part of that, which is my recommendation, is the last couple of years we've started getting real Christmas trees, um, which I think we took inspiration from you guys actually uh, yeah. in getting that. That is so fun. <laughs> mum's, mum's grimacing. No, no. Well, yeah, because once you just be careful of the traditions that you commit to. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them give me a bit of work. Yeah. But Chris, real Christmas trees smell so good. Like to me, do. because we, we started doing that from such a young age. I started doing that when. It smells like Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Sam was only, I think he was still a toddler at that time. And we've mm-hmm. done it every year since. And now we just cannot have a Christmas without a real Christmas tree. Yeah. Even if I got to get like a really stumpy little one that's more yeah. cheap just so I can get the smell in the house. It's not yeah. Christmas otherwise. Yeah. We picked you know? ours up uh, just before we came here to start recording. Um, and, it, yeah, the guy – we have a place out where we used to live and the guy, like, just does it as a hobby and donates all the money to the Cancer Council. And so it's really nice to go and, like, support a local business and get a cool Christmas tree. And just before we came into this podcast, I rang said man and nice. ordered, <laughs> ordered a Christmas tree also. Did which you? either yes. I can pick up after next weekend or Sam can pick up at any time. So it's on order. Nice. Yes. But definitely starting traditions is a high, highly recommended. I mean, that's what we did with Easter brunch as well. Yeah. From when you guys were very little were. and it evolved to a point where it's now, I think, more important than Christmas. Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. why, like, we love Easter brunch so much because our Christmas is kind of a smallish thing. Yeah. But Easter brunch is when we get to, like, be with family, even though they're not real family. Like, be with chosen family and have everybody around and have lots of people there and make and it a big sort of it's event. It's not that crazy busy time of year yeah. that everybody is exhausted and you're all worried about I just love it because it's like half the obligation things. Yeah. you just yeah. turn up like there's it's become more and more every year and there's more and more food involved every year and yeah. there's a lot of work that goes into it now but like 
Yeah, I love the. But the thing with the food too is that that's a tradition, and we're not allowed to deviate. No, no, like, yeah, the menu is set. The menu, by the way, <laughs> yeah. Easter brunch. menu of whatever was in your house at the time. That was what it was at the time. <laughs> what dinner progressed, and to. now it has to be the same every exactly. year. Yeah, yeah. because it was, so it just started out as like uh, it was just an Easter brunch. Like Easter, it was literally yeah. just Easter brunch. Like yeah. people just yes. rocked up, just brunch. having breakfast um, slash lunch. Well, we no, it was just for brunch, people to yeah. come to, yeah. and we just stayed, and yeah, there happened to be croissants here and then we just stayed and Fiona as of had right now spaghetti bowls <laughs> yeah Easter brunch is an all-day event um that is always just called brunch because that's what it, it began as but we have yeah. brunch at like 10 o'clock and then at like 2 p.m we have bruschetta and croissants and hot cross buns is that come yeah, in yeah they come oh, in they come in whatever comes they, in there they were our mm, contribution yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. when we worked yeah. together sam because yeah. we used to have yeah. them every day <laughs> <laughs> and then dinner is spaghetti bolognese and when we were kids we would play like murder in the dark and capture the flag and stuff and now we have progressed to drinking games and to beer pong and, yeah you know. <laughs> and it's just the mm-hmm. best day of the year yeah it's just a it's a really really big day and it's there's but relaxed and easy yeah mm. um yeah, okay, should I see my recommendations? Yeah. I've been nonstop listening to – have I even sent you this album yet? No. What the – what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to this album. It's called Birthplace by Novo Amor. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Does that look right? Yeah, it looks right. Um, it's super Bon esque It's like – it's basically a Bon Iver album, but it's not. Um, it is amazing. So, yeah, if you like Bon Iver, I think you'll like it. And that's my recommendation this week. Nice. <laughs> Do you have yours? Or is it- oh, look, I've got, I've probably got a few, but um, probably the one that I'd go with is um, doing a an act of kindness every day. So do something for somebody else, not necessarily for what it does for them, but for what it does for you. Um, and I think that's how lives can be transformed, your own as well as other people. So I'd recommend that. Did you have one from today or this week that made you happy? Um, I find that when you have that attitude of being available, that those things come through your door multiple times in a day. So yeah, I had a number of opportunities today. Yeah. Where I I felt like I was able to work with people, help people. And that's part of what I love about my job is that that's what it's all about. I'm now a deputy principal in a high school and that, that, is a problem-solving position, which mm. I love, and working with lots and lots of different people. So um, another recommendation on that, one, one of the things that I um, encouraged my staff to do this year was to find a word that they felt really encapsulated the purpose of what they do every day to try and get that down to one word. That came a little bit from a recommendation in your dad's book, Oh yeah, um, where he works with businesses to try oh, and sure. yeah to to really try and filter down to the one thing that um, that they're all about, but also from other experiences and other people that I've worked with. So yeah, coming up with one word is a bit of a challenge, but um, it can be a very interesting exercise to distill your values down into one thing. What was your word? My word for this year, I chose impact. All right. It was a good font. Yes, it was a good font. Um, so. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> right up there with Chiller and Joker, man. But it's, um, yeah, so choosing a word that you think just crystallises that for you that each day and, and then writing it up and doing that with my staff, we then had lots of really good conversations about why they chose their word and how it influenced what they did every day. Also, shout out to Dad's book. Yeah, I'll yeah. link. Does it have a link? Is it sold in places? Yes, I'll have a link to it. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us on our on our podcast. Yeah, it has been really nice to. I mean, a lot of these things we already knew, but it's nice to relearn things and. You know, you don't often ask your parents about their lives, and it's mm. been nice to do that. I've yeah, it's it. weird how much you tend not to like. You tend sometimes not to I have know a question, about, yeah. but yeah, you just be like, how did they? Yeah, mm. how did they get there? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was nice to have an excuse, and that's the whole podcast reason—an excuse to talk to people that are interesting. Yeah. So yeah. 
Thank you for thank, and, you, for, and thank this, you for thinking we're interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like this was one of the hardest ones to coordinate. Oh my god, yes, to get to everyone get, in the room, four people in a room—that's difficult stuff. We're all a little busy. Yeah, mm. yeah, life happens. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much for setting aside this time and joining mm. us. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome. A privilege. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can subscribe, leave us a review, follow us on Instagram, um, show us where you're listening by posting and tagging us on Instagram. We also have a Patreon account and you can uh, subscribe there and support us if you'd like. Also, the music is by The Vinyl Press and you can find them on Instagram at The Vinyl Press. Yeah, and send us any problems that you have. We want to solve them for you. Woo.